Hi everyone, welcome back to Photoshop Simplified. Today we're going to be talking about making adjustments with tools. All the tools are located over in the tool panel, which is here on the left. So first we're going to be talking about selections. And what a selection does is it isolates one or more parts of an image by specifying a selected area. And you can adjust these portions of your image while leaving the other parts unchanged. So there are several different ways to create a selection. The first is the marquee tool. And you can either draw out a rectangular marquee or an elliptical marquee. Now when you draw a marquee, you'll notice these kind of moving dotted lines around. We call those marching ants. And everything inside of those dotted lines is selected. Everything outside is not. So if I want to make adjustments to everything inside this circle, I just make the selection and then I just go ahead and make adjustments and I'll leave the rest of the area unchanged. Now you can add to selections by going up to the tools option panel and selecting add to selection. And then you can just draw out another selection and it'll just add more. You can do that continuously. You can also remove parts of a selection by going one icon over to subtract from selection. And then I'll just work by taking part of the selection away. As you can see, we have a crescent shaped selection now. You can modify your selection by going to the select menu. You can hit select and you can deselect. That'll get rid of your selection. There's a couple different ways you can create selections. You can use the lasso tools. There's the regular lasso tool, which just kind of allows you to freely draw any shape you want. And if you click outside, that'll also get rid of your selection. Under lasso tool, you also have a polygonal lasso tool. And that works by clicking points, and it'll drag out straight lines. You can create different polygons with that. And if you double click, it'll just close the selection on its own. Now we also have the magnetic lasso tool. And this tries to recognize edges of an image, and it'll go down to them and sort of automatically select. As you can see here, it's selecting the horizon for us. And as you drag along, it'll keep creating points. This is a good way to select maybe like the edge of a building or something that has a really hard edge. Personally, I mostly use the polygonal lasso tool or just regular lasso tool. And then I also use select and mask to help refine my selections. So let's just grab the polygonal lasso tool. And let's just draw a rough little selection around the clouds. So once we have our selection, we'll just click Select and Mask up in the Tools option panel. And as you can see down here, towards the bottom of the image, it's not selected. You can see the transparency grid. So if I want to feather out this selection, make it blend a little easier, you can just pull the feather up. As you can see, that hard edge really starts to blend out. And I can also smooth out the selection if it was jagged. You can shift the edge outward or inward, and you can even draw down here and add more to the selection. Or if you hold down the Alt key, you can subtract from the selection as you drag around. And Photoshop will try to recognize what it thinks that you want to select. Overall, this does a really good job. So once I have it, you know, I mostly have all the sky here. Let's go ahead and click OK. And you'll now see the new selection right here around the sky. You might ask, what are we going to use selections for? Well, they work great for removing objects from your image. For instance, I have this water drop that's sort of just above the horizon. And I want to get rid of that. So there's a couple different tools to get rid of objects from your image. The first is the spot healing brush. And it's really simple. You can just use it just as a brush tool, like we covered earlier. Use the bracket keys to make it bigger or smaller. Or you can right click and bring up the panel that will give you the options. With a spot healing brush, you just draw over the area you want to remove, and Photoshop will automatically recognize and replace the pixels with something that it thinks is suitable for there. And that works well for, you know, dust spots and, you know, simple objects, but if I want to try to remove, you know, say these power lines, it's not going to do a very good job with that. As you can see, it's duplicated the light there. It didn't do a very good job blending together. So you need to have more control when you want to remove something specific out of your image. But for that, I'll use the patch tool. What I'll do is I'll get the zoom tool, and zoom in on the area I want to get rid of. And the patch tool uses selections. So when you first select it, you just draw a selection around the object you want to remove. And then you'll see the icon change where it has two arrows because your selection is now closed. So you just click and drag over to a suitable replacement part of the image and release. 
and it does a great job blending. I mean, you really can't tell that anything was there at all. And it's super quick. And it's very controlled. And as you see, when you move it around, it shows you what you're hovering over to try to replace it with. Like obviously I wouldn't want to replace it with that because I got a chunk of building in it. So you want to find something similar. And there, just like that, we removed a few light poles. So I can go through and do all these and take a few minutes, but sometimes when you're working on removing stuff, you kind of have to do it in sections. Just real quick, we'll work through this building here. So in our last lesson, we talked about correcting color and correcting tonal range in an image. We use mostly adjustment layers for that. Now there's also tools that can help achieve this result. What I'm going to do is make a duplicate layer by pressing Control J. And let's go ahead and double click in here and we'll rename this Dodge. Now the Dodge tool and the Burn tool, they come from the darkroom era of photography. So if you go down to the Dodge tool, you'll see it almost looks like a magnifying glass. And what this actually was, it was a stick and it had a piece of cardboard on the end of it. So when photographers were creating their prints, the more light that hit that part of the paper, it would create a darker part of the image. What they would do is they would use this dodge tool to cover up part of the image, stopping light from hitting it, and allowing that part of the image to be brighter. So Photoshop gives us these tools with a lot more control. Let's say I want to brighten up the parts of the sky that are already a little bit brighter. So what I'll do is I'll select the dodge tool, and you can see up in the tools panel it works just like a brush. You have your pixel size. Now you can also select the range that it's going to affect. So you can choose shadows, midtones, or highlights. We're going to work with highlights since it's the brighter part of the image that we want to brighten up. And then we also have exposure. Exposure is basically just strength. So if you have it set at 2% exposure, it's not going to do nearly as much as if you had it set at 50% exposure. So we'll go ahead and set the exposure at about 15%. Make sure we have our layer highlighted. Then I generally use about a 500 pixel brush. You can right click to bring up your options or you can set them up in the tool options panel. Keep the hardness down at zero because then it blends together well. If you have 100% you know, hardness, you're going to get these weird lines going through your image where you're dodging and burning at. So let's just go ahead and dodge out some of these brighter areas. And you just use it just like a brush. I'm just clicking and painting around different parts of the image that I want to brighten up. Now when a person's viewing an image, the darker parts of the image sort of recede backwards and the lighter parts come forward. So by using dodging and burning, we're really adding a lot of depth or the illusion of depth to our image. And as you can see, we've made a big difference just with a couple of little clicks of the mouse. So we've made the lighter parts lighter, how about we make the darker parts darker? And that's where the burn tool comes in. So what the burn tool was, it was pretty much just a piece of cardboard with a hole in it. And they would just move it around, allowing the light from the enlarger to hit that part of the light sensitive paper. And the more light that hits it, the darker it gets. So let's go under the dodge tool, and we'll select the burn tool. And the same with the dodge tool, we'll probably want to do about 500 pixels. Let's set the hardness down to zero. So we have nice smooth blending. And now let's just go around and paint the darker parts of the image. Let's go ahead and hide the dodge layer so we can really see what this is doing. It's all about adding the illusion of depth to your image. And I do this to every single storm photo or you know, pretty much any photo that I take. Definitely every weather photo gets dodged and burned in the sky. Just like with our adjustment layers, we kind of overdo it to see what effect it's having. So when I'm kind of happy with what I've done, I'll go ahead and take the opacity on that layer down. 
and this will sort of blend our dodge and burn layers together. So here's where we started, and here's where we got to using the dodge and the burn tool. And you don't want to be obvious with it. You don't want people to be like, oh, he dodged there, or oh, she burned there. Parts of the image, like the highlights down here, let's go ahead and go on the background there. You don't want to burn down highlights to the point they become muddy. That's when it really starts to become noticeable. So let's go ahead and just really overdo this. That is not what you want. I see that often in people's sunset pictures, and it's just, you know, I would rather see it just blown out than look like that. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. All right, so the next thing I want to show you guys is the sponge tool, and it works very similar to the dodge and the burn tool, except instead of controlling the brightness or darkness of a part of the image, it controls the saturation of it. The sponge tool is located under the dodge and burn tools as well. So let's click and drag down and select the sponge tool. And let's just go ahead and merge all these layers, and we'll make a duplicate layer. Same with the dodge and burn tool. Right click, bring up the size and the hardness of the brush. Let's go ahead and make this a little smaller because we're going to be working with smaller parts of the image. Click enter to get rid of that screen. And bracket key just to make it a little bit bigger. I want to make the greens that are showing through the dark parts of the clouds a little bit greener. I have my sponge tool selected. Up in the tools option panel, you can set the mode to saturate or desaturate. We're going to want to saturate. And flow is pretty much the same thing as strength. So higher flow equals more dramatic effect. Lower flow equals less dramatic effect. Let's just go around and paint these greener parts of the image, and you can see it really starts to pull out those cyans and just give a nice glow to your clouds. Now, obviously, when I'm working hard on an image, I'm trying to get it you know, perfect. I spent a lot more time doing this, but for the sake of time and not wasting you guys' time, we're just doing really quick edits here just to make little improvements to the image. And we've hit most of the major spots there. Let's go ahead and pull the opacity down to make it a little bit less dramatic of an effect. And here's our after and before. Really slight difference, but it is noticeable and it improves your image. These are a few tools in the tool panel. Obviously, there's a lot more. These are the ones that I use most while I'm going through my workflow. I'm using the selection tools. I'm using the dodge tool, burn tool, and the sponge tool. Those are my major go-to tools for making image adjustments. And we'll go deeper into some tools on our next lesson.